there was nothing. And then God said, Let there be light! As cyclists, we're all pretty obsessed with numbers and we're mentally trained to think that bigger is better. But with lights, is that always the case? Now, I have here the Immelant R60C. This thing is a beast. Uh, 18,000 lumens and an amazing CNC'd aluminum body. Uh, it can basically turn night into day. Uh, according to Google, a police search helicopter spotlight is around 50,000 lumens. So this is more than a third of a police search helicopter in your hands. As well as in your hands, you can slap it on your bike, obviously with a bit of a bodge job. But do you need 18,000 lumens for riding a bike? I mean, it's great. You can see perfectly, uh, hell, you can even wear your sunglasses outside at night and see just fine. But it is really hard to express the sheer power of this thing. Uh, everyone within one kilometer radius is gonna instantly know that you're there and you're doing something, uh, but may not know what you're up to. If there's anyone standing in front of you, even hundreds of meters away, you're just gonna burn the retinas right out of their eyes. Uh, your average car high beam headlight is around two to 4,000 lumens. So this is 18,000 lumens. It really is just overkill. I mean, the good thing about these high-powered lights is that you can always turn them down. Uh, this Element R60C, for example, can be turned down to a mild 300 lumens. Now, at 300 lumens, you can leave it on constantly for 30 hours. Now, that's pretty cool battery life. But let's be straight, this Element R60C is a very cool toy but not very practical for the bike. So let's switch over to this. This is the Wuben B2. Now this Wuben B2 was actually recommended to me by the folks at flashlightbrand.com. Uh, I asked them for the best all round value high performance bike light for around 40 to 50 bucks and this is what they came to me with. Uh, it's a bike specific light so it does come with a handlebar mount uh, that you can attach without any tools. The beam pattern is also focused ahead of you on the road in front of you, just as you'd expect from a bike light. Uh, its maximum lumens is 1,300 lumens. That is plenty. Uh, I think I came to the conclusion in my last video that 800 lumens is plenty for most bike riding. Uh, the option of whacking it up to 1,300 is always nice though. For most riding, I find myself using this on the medium setting, which is around 400 lumens. Uh, now on medium, it can keep going for up to eight hours, which is definitely longer than most of my night rides. Uh, when it does come time to recharge it, it's done via USB-C, which is great. I hate it when gadgets come with USB micro or USB mini, you know, it's 2020, everyone should be on USB-C by now. Another cool thing about this light I was totally not expecting is that it also comes with a rear tail light. I mean, that's pretty rad. Uh, it can slip on the back of your seat post nice and gentle. Now these days I'm using the Magine Radar as my rear light, a link to the video I did on that up here. Uh, but it is always nice to have another spare rear light, especially one that's so small and just easy to slip in your pocket or whatever. But why am I here talking about lights? Uh, around two years ago, I made a video called Are Chinese Bike Lights Any Good? And it was a pretty successful video and judging by the comments, lots of you guys found it interesting too. Now, one negative of that video was that now, since that video, every week I get two or three emails from various companies asking me to review their lights. I usually give a quick scrim read and then there's usually nothing new or exciting and so I just kind of pass. Uh, one other thing I've noticed in the emails I get these days is that the lumen claims of these torches is getting crazier and crazier. Uh, the original lights I tested all seem legit in their claims and their performances. However, these days, one flick through AliExpress or even Amazon and you're bombarded with a bunch of super cheap lights with ridiculous lumen claims. Now, I'm not the only one to notice this trend. Uh, there's a great video by the Talk Test channel on this very subject that's worth checking out. Uh, the video is called How Amazon is Allowing Flashlights to Get Out of Hand. And there are examples in that video of lights on Amazon that claim to be 120,000 lumens but deliver just 1,700 lumens. Uh, most common is that on Amazon or whatever, the lights claim to be around 90,000 lumens, but in reality, they only deliver 1,400 or 1,500 lumens. 
So if you're in the market for a new light, what are you to do? Most of the models from my last video have since been discontinued. And then AliExpress and Amazon just seem to be full of people just exaggerating the head off. Now, I still get a lot of messages asking me for advice since my last video. And so serious me replying to all these messages one by one, I thought I'd do some research on where to get the best light for your needs. Now, you see, most of these companies that approach me ask me to review their products. They're usually pushing their own brand. Now, sometimes they're a Chinese factory and they don't really understand marketing and stuff, or sometimes they are like a drop shipping brand and they've just got their logo and slapped it on a light. Uh, but a few weeks ago, I got an email that got my attention. Now, a platform called flashlightbrand.com. Despite the name, they're not an individual brand. They're in fact a platform for a whole bunch of flashlights. Uh, they have over 17 different brands on their website with nearly a thousand models of flashlights, not just bike specific ones, but also things like this. And they're based right here in Shaman City. So I went to their headquarters to have a chat with them, see what they're all about. And what I found was a great group of people who are passionate about the product and really knowledgeable about the product too. Uh, I also want to be clear, I'm not getting paid for this video. I don't get commissions on the sales. I just think it's a good site they're running and a good place to get a reliable light. You see, I think in these days of ludicrous lumens claims, it's good to have a neutral platform in the middle to sort of sort out the good from the bad. Another cool thing about flashlightbrand.com is that they have some exclusive models too. They basically pitch their specs to the flashlight manufacturers and they'll make them an exclusive model to their specifications. Uh, they have live online chat on their website so you can basically chat to them, tell them your budget, tell them the requirements, and they'll give you a few recommendations. It takes all of the confusion out of the equation and means I don't have to review these 1,000 lights one by one, and you guys can just take the advice of the professionals. They also have ludicrous flashlights like this 18,000 Element R60C. Uh, they even have the big brother to this guy, the Element MS12, which has 65,000 lumens. I cannot even imagine, like 18,000 lumens, it's, it's much brighter than I thought it was going to be. So 65,000 lumens, uh, I'm out, I'm done. So yeah, this is the time of year when the days start getting shorter, it starts getting darker earlier, and it's time to start thinking about your lighting setup for the autumn, winter season. Uh, personally, I think this Wuben B2 is a great setup for your bike, uh, obviously with a free rear flashlight as well. If you've got a round handlebar, it's going to mount easily. It's a nice weight. Uh, the battery life is good, the beam pattern is excellent, only lighting up what you want to see. But if this isn't exactly what you want, head on over to flashlightbrand.com, see what we've got on there. I think I've got about 20 different models of bike-specific flashlights at the minute, uh, ranging from $17 all the way up to $150. So definitely something for every budget and every need. Have a look around the website, have a chat with them, and see if you can find what you want. Link is in the description, of course. Okay, so here's the thing about testing torches and lights on a camera. Uh, usually cameras set to auto, they're always adjusting the ISO and the shutter speed to make the image look neutral. So when you turn your light up, the camera turns itself down, and when you turn the lights down, the camera turns itself up. So usually you can't see the difference between lights. So what I've done now, I've locked the exposure on this camera. The exposure on this camera will not change. If you see now, I'm in this city setting, I've kind of exposed for the street lights. If I turn this guy off, you'll see, you know, this is kind of what your eyes see. So I think I'm pretty much exposed how my eyes see. You can see the bottom side of my hand, where there's no street lights, it's pretty dark. And uh, I'm gonna keep this exposure until I tell you otherwise. So let's go. Uh, this is this is the Wuben B2 on its lowest setting, medium setting, high setting. Like I say, I usually keep it on medium, so let's go for this for now. Okay, time to show you the big guns. So I've not touched the exposure on the camera. The Wuben's still on medium. And let's turn on this one. Wow. For comparison, check this car's headlights. <laughs> the headlights on that thing aren't even as bright as the Wuben. Boom. Oh, I think these guys are dogging. If you don't know what dogging means, 
don't look it up. I can report no dogging, just camping. Anyway, let's keep going up. Let me just use this wall to give you an idea of beam pattern though. So this is the Wuban. Uh, I am actually facing slightly uphill, so if the beam looks a bit high, that's why. But you can clearly see there's more below the beam than above the beam. But then if we go for the Imulan, well, for a start, it just turns the wall white. But if we turn it down to its tiniest setting and turn off the Wuban, you can see it's basically just a circle because the lens is a circle. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, so still not touch the exposure from earlier. As you can see, there's a, there's a nice, these street lights aren't very bright, but bright enough. Maybe you can just make out the city lights down there. Uh, I think it looks a bit brighter with my eyes than it does with the screen, because obviously my eyes have adjusted since the city, whereas I've told the camera not to adjust, but you get the idea. Uh, so again, let's start with the Wuban. So this is the Wuban on its lowest setting, the Wuban on the medium setting, and the Wuban on the brightest setting. And as you can see, the small spot where it's lighting up is definitely well enough illuminated. Let's turn that guy off a sec. And then in comparison, there we go. So it's absolute carnage from the element. That is on turbo setting. But if we knock it down to a sensible, its lowest setting, that's how it looks. Let's keep going. I guess now is as good time as any to tell you the head on the Wuban can actually swivel. Useful if you want to check out the scenery to the left and right, I suppose. Or if you want to avoid glazing oncoming cars, maybe. Anyway, that's what I tell you that. Okay, now we have a nice road to test. Uh, yeah, I think you can see pretty much what I can see, which is pretty close to bugger all. Still won't touch the things on the camera. It's dark enough that I'm getting a bit freaked out, but never mind. Uh, let's try the Wuban first. On the lowest setting, medium setting, highest setting. Let's switch over to the element, high setting first. Yeah, we are just turning night into day. I can't explain it any other way. And that's the element on the lowest setting. Again, plenty. And it will last for 30 hours on this setting. So in conclusion, how many lumens is enough for a bike? Uh, 18,000 is definitely too much. I mean, just look at this thing. It just absolutely, even this black wall, it can turn to white. Uh, not easiest thing to mount on the bike. Yeah, just absolute crazy. Uh, personally, I think when you're riding a bike, 1200 is plenty 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 uh, even like 800 is a lot and uh, if for regular road bike riding maybe 400 lumens you can also get by with it's going to depend on a few things like what kind of riding you're doing and how light or dark the environment is where you are if you check out my last video i had lots of specific shots of different lights at different lumens so you can kind of see how that looks too i'm going to put some links in the description down below to these guys on the flashlightbrand.com website along with some other ones that I like on there. Uh, oh, and at checkout, if you use CCFB as a discount code, that'll get you 10% off your order as well. So that's pretty cool. And with that, you guys stay safe out there. Keep your lights on riding at night, and I'll see you next time. China Cycling, out.